Back to back 50 point games for Bernard King. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move by Jordan! <laughs> Here's Michael at the foul line. A shot on Elo. We talk about the top power forwards to ever play the game. The same names get mentioned. Duncan, Barkley, Malone, Nowitzki, Garnett, Elvin Hayes. But there's one name that's too often left off the list. The name of a guy who routinely gave some of the greatest to ever lace him up. The business. I'm talking about Kevin McHale. Despite not being the most athletic guy on the court, Mikhail used his incredibly long arms and deadly post moves to score over defenders. Kevin McHale was tough, gritty, and unselfish. He wasn't a guy that brute strength and put, put brute strength, strength to try to get to a position. He just kind of, with that length, just faced you, walked you down, and then he could get it off the block a couple dribbles and still be able to get himself in position to get a shot that you had a hard time challenging. You don't see anybody in a game like that today. What is one of the things that a power forward in the NBA does that a lot of people don't realize uh, that's advantageous on the offensive end of the floor? Well, I think for the power forward position, especially back when I played, you were it was called power forward for a reason. You were establishing a physical presence. I mean, you were really you were pounding guys, you were hitting guys. You're you know if, if, if back then a lot of teams would start picking you up. At the, at the free throw line top of the key so you couldn't get down the post. And you were establishing um, a lot of physicality down there and your willingness to battle and, and bump and hit, set picks, get people open, do a lot of the dirty work. You were, you know, you, back then you were, you were rebounding, you were blocking shots, you know, you were, you were asked to, to do a lot of stuff. He had every post move in the book, the jump hook, the up and under, the reverse lay-in, the fade away. Kevin McHale is probably the greatest low post offensive threat among power forwards. Kevin McHale was a sensational post up player. But I wanted to engage as quickly as I could. I wanted to get as much physicality on him, get the guards, and eventually I wanted to be able to get the ball, you know, over here, here. I wanted the ball here, so everything was one quick move. I didn't want to get the ball. Here. I tried to get as deep as I possibly could. So if I could get C Webb pinned, I would stop right here. And I mean, I tell you right now, you had that look on your face like you better throw me the ball. I'd have that that crazy man look. Like and I wanted it right here. Yep. Now I just went to work. When McHale entered his so-called torture chamber, there was pretty much nothing defenders could do to stop him. Kevin with his length, with his footwork. Um, and he, I mean, supreme confidence in his ability, not only to knock down the 14, 15 footer, one dribble to a spot, one dribble to the rim, up and under. He had all of that game. In his torture chamber, Mikhail made easy work of defenders in the block with a wide set of fakes, spins, and post moves. Mikhail was simply unstoppable on the block. So much so that in the 1986-87 season, he averaged 26 points a game while shooting 60% from the floor and 80% from the line. You know how many NBA players have averaged 20 or more points, shot 60% from the floor and 80% from the strike in the same season? One, Kevin McHale. The two-time Sixth Man of the Year winner was the best power forward of the 80s and had two seasons when he shot 60% or higher from the field. Think about that. Not LeBron, not Kareem, not Michael, not Duncan, not Wilt. Kevin McHale. McHale played his best ball when it mattered most in the playoffs. Harry Bird put it best when he said no one can guard Kevin, especially in the playoffs. And, and Larry had great confidence in him. I mean, Larry would... But specifically, when we ran the offense, if you threw it to Larry and it was, you know, Larry come off a pin down on Kevin, he wouldn't come off looking to shoot. That's, you, Brian, you know, that's an indication that if you got a guy that's in position to score, you throw him the ball. And that's what Larry did with him. So we knew he was capable of scoring. Simply put, Mikhail was at his best when the stakes were at their highest. You've got a guy that you've got your number one player has confidence in then you know you got a guy that could play. He would, Larry would throw the ball to Robert because he, he knew how Robert needed the ball just because all guys need the ball at some point. Kevin, he threw the ball because Kevin usually had a mismatch. With his long arms and the footwork, he had a mismatch somewhere and was able to get off a good shot, and that's what you have to do in the league. Seven-time All-Star, six-time All-Defense, 
First team All NBA in 1987, top 50 player of all time, 18 points, seven boards for his career, and most importantly, a three time champion. He won sixth man of the year twice, and of course, three championships with the Celtics. And he did his fair share of the work in earning those titles. He's eighth all time in total blocks for the playoffs, third in offensive rating for the playoffs, and 17th in win shares for the playoffs. The great Charles Barkley was once asked, who was the toughest player he ever had to guard? His answer, Hall of Famer Kevin McHale. I'm telling you, you kids just don't know how good Kevin McHale was. When McHale entered his so-called torture chamber, there was pretty much nothing defenders could do to stop him. Welcome to the torture chamber. 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 Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm going up. It's about maybe five seconds to go in the game. I go up to shoot. Mikhail goes, all right, that is your last shot of the season. I hope you make it. My, actually, my personal nemesis is Kevin McHale because he was such, he's the best player I ever played against. You could not stop him. I've always said that you could not stop that guy. And Kevin McHale, they got to, it got to the point where they were calling him a man of a thousand moves could not guard him one-on-one -on, -one on the box because he has such great footwork and he did a great job of feeling the contact. And once he felt you, you were done. If the double team didn't come right away, forget about it. He had too much stuff on the box. And on the other end, I had to use every ounce of energy I did to score on him. That lost art, right? Like, you need a guy, especially from Larry's position. Think of how valuable that was. That's the way. 